Lawler Ford Road, just outside of St. Louis, earned itself the nickname Zombie Road because of the high number of ghost stories attached to it. According to reports, the road was built on an old Native American trail in the 1800s, which could explain the reports of Native American ghosts seen along the road. Sometime in the late 1800s, the train tracks were extended along the river, passing through what would later be Glencoe. Today, only a few remnants of the original railroad remain, but the old lines can still be seen at the end of Zombie Road. According to legends, Mrs. McCullough, the wife of a local judge, was hit by a train in 1876. Since then, there have been several reports of a figure in white that walks the abandoned line and then disappears. Some say the figure glows a bluish white light and disappears if you approach it. Could this be Mrs. McAuliffe? Some of the surrounding area was once a resort community until the 1940s. Many of the homes were left abandoned, which contributes to the creepiness of the road. Near the old shacks along the beach at the end of the trail, there is a mysterious woman who yells at people that pass by from the house. When investigated, the woman is never there. The road eventually fell into despair and was abandoned. The location then became a local hangout for the teens in the 1950s. One legend about Lawler Road is the reason for his nickname, Zombie Road, is for the zombie killer, a man who is said to have lived in a shack in the woods and is reported to have tracked down and killed young lovers out looking for a place to be alone. Another spirit that is said to be along the road is that of a boy who fell from the bluffs along the river. The boy's body has never been found. It makes complete sense that any place with an imprint of the infamous Jesse James would be haunted. With the violent temperament of the inhabitants and the violence that happened on the property, it would be more surprising to hear there were no tales of ghostly activity. Jesse and Frank James were raised in the house by their mother, who married three different times and had eight children. It was here Jesse was whipped as a teen by the Union militia that strung up his stepfather and burnt nearby farms. It is also here that Jesse's mother watched as her son Archie was murdered by the Pinkerton detectives. After Jesse was killed, he was buried on the property where his mother could protect the grave from trespassers or souvenir hunters. Later, his body was reinterred in the Mount Olivet Cemetery. The James family farm has been reported to be haunted for more than a century. The home is reported to have a number of different spirits that are still lingering. Lights are said to move around both inside and outside of the property buildings, and there have also been reports of hearing the sounds of pounding hooves, muffled shots, and cries. Today, there is a variety of strange happenings reported in the house, which is now a museum. Reports include lights seen inside long after the building is locked for the night, movement, which never seems to register on the security system, and the extremely strong feeling of a presence. Some say on foggy mornings you can hear the hushed voices and the sounds of restless horses from a nearby woods but when it is followed up, there are no signs of a disturbance or tracks. Although only 3.6 miles long, Blackwell Road seems to have an evil quality to it. Because of the negative energy that surrounds the road, Satanists seem to be attracted to it. Apparently, they also run a restaurant along the road, but that is not all that creeps along this road. For years, people have told stories of the bridge on Blackwell Road that spans across Big River. The old iron bridge, called Black Tram Bridge, was the site of many hangings by a local magistrate, as well as satanic rituals. 
Reports say that many people have heard the sound of drumming, which has been attributed to the road lying on the Native American land. Other reports say that if you park your car on the bridge and flash your lights three times, a ghost car will appear and chase you off the bridge. There have also been reports of a ghostly couple along the road from the 1950s flagging down cars as they pass. No one knows what happens if you stop. There are legends that have circulated high schools in the St. Charles area about a witch named Molly Crenshaw. According to legends, she was a free Jamaican or a Haitian who practiced voodoo. The townspeople would go see Molly for different charms and spells, but when severe weather ruined a harvest, the town blamed Molly, saying she cursed the town with her magic. Legends say that an angry mob stormed Molly's house and that she cursed several in attendance before they lynched her. To prevent Molly from rising from the dead, they cut her body into quarters and buried them far apart. Reports say that two high school football players went in search of Molly's true grave and that they were found impaled on the graveyard's fence. According to legends, anyone who finds Molly Crenshaw's true grave will meet an untimely end. Caraco Road appears to be straight out of a Grimm's fairy tale with the winding road that disappears from one bend to the next. There are several signs along the shoulder, all with the same ominous message, no trespassing. According to local legends, behind these signs in the thick forest lives the Bubblehead family. Some legends say that a family took experimental drugs that made their heads grow to about the size of a pumpkin and that the government or pharmaceutical company bought them off and hid them on this isolated road. Other legends say that the Bubbleheads are an old St. Louis family with physical deformities caused from years of inbreeding. Legends say the family keeps to themselves most of the time, but they do attack trespassers with a fierce rage. And if that is not enough to keep you away, there are also legends of hookman ghosts with enormous heads that prowl the woods at night. Momo is the name of a local legend similar to Bigfoot that lives in Missouri. The name Momo is short for Missouri Monster and is reported to have a large pumpkin-shaped head with a furry body and stands about seven feet tall. The creature first appeared in the 1970s to two boys and their dog. The boys reported that the creature had a terrible smell. From that day forward, there were many reports of sightings and many townspeople reported hearing growls and screams late at night. During a full-scale manhunt, authorities found deep handprints and three-toed footprints pressed with great strength into the ground. They also continued to detect the same foul smell as before that would send their dogs into an uproar. A final set of tracks were found in a resident's backyard. The tracks were about 20 feet away from any standing objects and just mysteriously ended like the creature vanished from that very spot. Phelps Grove Park encompasses 44 acres. It was once a tribal village for the Osage and the Kickapoo Indians and is now home to a wandering bride spirit. There are two similar legends attached to the park. One version says the bride and groom were killed when their car lost control in the park. Under the third bridge, late at night, it is reported you can still see the bride's spirit. Another version, similar to the first, is that a bride was killed on her wedding day when her carriage overturned. She died instantly. She is reported to be seen wandering the park in her wedding dress, holding the hem of her gown, but where her face should be, 
there is only darkness. Not only are the Jefferson barracks brimming with history, they are full of ghostly inhabitants too. Established in 1826, the fort served as housing for soldiers who protected the settlers from the Native Americans. The fort has also been used as a military hospital and a veterans hospital. The historic barracks is reported to be haunted by a Confederate general who has been seen in uniform in the commander's office. Several buildings are reported to be hot spots with different apparitions, but strange unexplainable events are reported throughout the post, including lights flickering on and off, disembodied voices, phantom footsteps, moving objects, and the apparition of guards doing their rounds. Some reports claim that people have had unfriendly physical experiences, with many either being poked or pushed roughly. In Creve Coeur, Missouri, legends tell the tragic story of a daughter of a Native American chief who fell in love. Some stories say she loved a warrior who died in battle why others claim it was a fur trader that she loved who did not share her feelings. Regardless, the rest of the story says that she became so depressed and heartbroken that she jumped to her death from the cliffs. Visitors have reported hearing a woman crying and some have claimed to see her apparition leaping from the cliff and disappearing just before she hits the water. Fittingly so, Creve Kerr, translated, means broken heart. Said to be one of the most haunted places in America, Lymph Mansion continues to play host to the tragic Lymph family. Throughout the years, the mansion has been a stately home, office space, and a rundown boarding house, and finally restored to the dinner theater, restaurant, and bed and breakfast it is today. In the 19th century, the Lymph family was practically royalty in St. Louis, Missouri. John Adams Lymph introduced lager beer to St. Louis in 1938 with the opening of his brewery. With the wealth he obtained, the family bought a beautiful mansion near his brewery. In the middle of his success, the Lymph family experienced the first of many tragedies to come. Frederick Lymph, William Sr.'s favorite son died suddenly of a heart condition at the age of 28. This devastated William Sr. and he eventually shot himself in the head. All of the family married well, especially William Lymph Jr., who married the railroad supply heiress Lillian Hadlin. William Jr. was known to be a ladies' man and a partier and would hold lavish parties in the caves and tunnels that led to the brewery under the mansion. To keep his new wife away so he continued this lifestyle, William Jr. gave his wife $1,000 per day and demanded that she spend it all every day or she would get no more. In the meantime, with Lillian away, William was known to bring in numerous prostitutes for his parties. Finally, after 10 years, he grew tired of his trophy wife and filed for divorce, which became the talk of the town and the scandal of the decade. Soon, rumors surfaced that William Jr. had a son with a woman, not his wife. The boy is said to have had Down syndrome, which was an embarrassment to the family, so the boy was locked away in the attic until his death when he was in his 30s. When Prohibition came along, it spelled doom for the Lymph family. On March 20, 1920, Ellis Lymph Wright, William's sister, shot herself just like her father. It is said she was depressed over her rocky marriage. With the close of the brewery, William Jr. also became depressed, eventually killing himself by shooting himself in the heart in the mansion. Brother Charles inherited the mansion and remodeled it back into a residence. Soon, he too became depressed and shot himself in the same room his father did, but not before killing his beloved dog in the basement. 
After Charles's death, the mansion was sold and turned into a boarding house, and the haunting tales began. Residents would often complain of ghostly knocks and phantom footsteps, and pretty soon nobody wanted to live there, and the place that was once a stately home deteriorated. In 1975, the old mansion was sold again and remodeled into the restaurant and inn. During remodeling, workers reported apparitions, strange unexplainable sounds, vanishing tools, and the feeling of being watched. Many workers would leave and never return. Since its opening, staff has also reported strange happenings, apparitions that appear and quickly disappear, disembodied voices, glasses flying off the bar, doors locking and unlocking all by themselves, lights turning on and off by themselves, and the piano playing when no one is near it. The three hot spots in the mansion are said to be the attic, which is haunted by William Jr.'s illegitimate son known as the Monkey Boy. He is seen from the windows. The stairway is also reported to be haunted, as well as the basement, where the womanizing William Jr. is said to be. Guests have also reported that in William Sr.'s room, they hear what sounds like someone running up the stairs and kicking the door, but when they look, there is no one around. The Lymph Mansion has been featured in a number of magazine articles and newspapers, and now attracts ghost hunters from around the country.